Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Radha Kumari, and I'm a staff engineer on the Demand Engineering team at Slack. We look after inverse load balancing, TLS, SSL, DNS, CDN, service networking, among many other things. In 2019, our team decided to migrate all our ingress load balancing tier from HA proxy to Envoy, mainly due to some operation overheads with HA proxy and some great features that Envoy proxy offers. This talk won't go into more details about why we decided to migrate and how we did it. We wrote a detailed blog post on that. Please see the link below. Two years and 15 days later, this migration was officially marked as done. In the next couple of minutes and so, we're going to talk about some of the oops moments during these migrations, steps we took to troubleshoot and mitigate, and a few key takeaways towards the end. So let's get started. During our web load balancing tier migration, we noticed an elevated 5xx rate from our web API endpoints. This was detected internally and we started digging. Retry was among the first things we looked at and I was sure we had retries configured on connect failure in our config. With that assurance, we moved on and tried a couple of things to get that 5xx error rate down. Unfortunately, none of those helped. One fine day, one of the team members noticed that there was a typo in our configuration. Instead of retrying on connect hyphen failure, we were trying on connect underscore failure. Now, the question is, how did that change pass our testing or code review? In the version of Envoy we were running back then, retry on config field is just a free form text, which will ignore any unknown value like, con like connect underscore failure. Every time we change anything in our config, we do a validation to ensure the new config is valid before we replace the old one using Envoy validate mode. Since Envoy ignored the unknown value in the config as the config was valid, this change missed our testing. To add to that, we had the same typo at other places and tests were based on that wrong string, which is another reason how our test failed to catch this. Envoy wasn't doing any validation of the config value. This behavior was later fixed in Envoy version 1.11.0. So we corrected the typo in our configuration to fix the regression. Yes, we also fixed our tests. To ensure this never happens again, we also fixed this in our library that generates onboard configuration by explicitly ex specifying a list of all the strings that onboard supports and ensuring the library returns an error on any unknown value. Next up, this was during our internal web API tier migration. We had just finished migrating 25% of the traffic to Envoy in uh, AWS region, whereas the rest 25 was still going to HA proxy in the same region. After 12 hours into that change, our customer experience team got a few tickets from one of our customers that they are getting HTTP response code 404 for some API endpoints, but only for 25% of the requests they were sending. This was soon escalated to us, and we could see the error matched the timing of the rollout we did. Upon taking, we found that the request was appending default SSL port 443 to the HTTP host header, which is uncommon, but not unsupported. We didn't account for this behavior during the migration process. Our edge onboards were configured to match only on the host name and not on the appended port, resulting in 404 as Envoy was unable to find a route match for this type of request. Now, how did this work in HA proxy? Answer is simple. We didn't have any host or authority-based routing rules. They accepted everything. So we rolled back the migration to ease customer pain and later on made a change in our edge config to match on both host and host colon port. Next up, this was by far the most difficult issue we have had. Our desktop team noticed 12% extra latency for every API request across all Slack clients. This issue escalated to us and we started investigating. We tried a couple of things in terms of timeouts and such, but nothing worked. So we enabled tracing at the Envoy layer. 
this was the turning point as with traces, we discovered that extra time was taken before request processing starts and TLS happens before that. With that information, we started looking at all things TLS in our configuration and noticed a bug in our TLS session ticket keys config. For those who don't know what TLS session ticket key is, it's a mechanism to allow clients to reuse TLS sessions when they reconnect within short period of time, preferably few hours. It is used to speed up TLS handshakes, which improves end user latency, especially for the customers connecting from Asia Pacific region in case of Slack. I'm not going to talk about how to set up and how to use it in a secure way as it's out of context. So going back to the issue I mentioned a minute ago, we noticed 4% extra latency for every API request, and we traced it down to a bug in session ticket keys configuration. The bug goes fuzzly. Sometimes the keys that we were using to generate these session tickets were not synchronously rotated across all onboards. This means sometimes the request would come with a key that Envoy doesn't know about yet and therefore required a full TLS handshake. Ensuring synchronous key rotation across all Envoys fixed the latency issue. With that, let's look at some of the things we learned along the way. Don't under underestimate the power of retries and timeouts. We have mistakenly missed these in every migration. First and foremost, aim for parity. Parity is more important than added feature. It reduces the number of variables your rollout depends on. Keep rollback or revert plan fast and simple. Fast rollbacks are more important than getting things right the first time. Preparing a rollback full request tested, reviewed, and approved can do wonders sometimes. Our edge API load balancing tier migration was reverted around eight times. And even though it was a manual process of merging the revert PR and running a Terraform pipeline, it only took a couple of minutes. Evaluate risks and manage expectations accordingly. In any big migration, there is always a risk of causing outages and incidents. And those are always disruptive, especially for customers. Know that you will break things and make sure this is communicated to the business during initial planning phases. Business or organization needs to be aware why this migration is happening and how does that benefit the organization? What is the revert plan and how long does the revert take? This makes rollouts stress-free because the last thing you want is having to justify the risks or the migration itself in the middle of an incident or similar. I love CURD. This is such a powerful tool. More than 95% of the configuration features were tested using CURD, ranging from routing rules to TLS and much more. But remember, it's not a one tool to test all the things. With that, thank you so much for listening. Hope you learned something from our failures. And we're hiding. Have a nice day.